Welcome back to Close Up. We learned this week that St. Cobain Performance Plastics will close its Merrimack plant after years of controversy. That facility first made news several years ago with the discovery of so-called forever chemicals that have been found in nearby drinking water. So the question today is, what does the closure mean for the plant's agreement when it comes to the cleanup and remediation? We're joined now by New Hampshire's Department of Environmental Services Commissioner, Robert Scott. Commissioner, thanks for being here this morning. Well, thank you. Okay, so we, we heard the news this week. At some point in 2024, once St. Cobain finishes all its current contracts, it will shutter that facility. But there is this long-standing agreement now in place when it comes to the remediation, the filtration systems, uh, and providing bottled water in some cases for a lot of residents in several nearby swimming towns. What does this closure mean for that agreement? Uh, effectively, it doesn't change that at all. So we have a, a legal agreement with the state of New Hampshire with uh, St. Cobain Performance Plastics. Uh, it covers a 64 square mile area uh, uh, around the plant, mm -hmm. which is unprecedented, by the way, and that they're obligated for those contaminated areas to, to in, the, in the short term, provide bottled water, uh, in the longer term, to either uh, help treatment at your home or connection to a water line. So it, it, it should change nothing. As a state regulator, I'm here to, 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 to make sure that happens. I will say on their behalf, when they, when they told us about the closure, They've been very upfront saying they'll still continue this work. Uh, my staff meets with them uh, uh, every other week, and uh, that's still happening, and they're still saying all the right things. Now, did DES, did the state have any indication that this was coming down the pipeline from the company? Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, we, we found out the same morning. I think everybody else did. But you're, you're still confident that this agreement will hold and that moving into the future, the folks who live in that region will still be getting the services that they, that they were promised based on that agreement? Correct. I do. Okay. Uh, and as we look at this issue, it's not really just St. Cobain, but now the state has really been testing a lot more when it comes to PFAS and other contaminants in water. Uh, and the more we search, it seems, the more we're finding. Very true. So we, we've leaned ahead, but probably because of the experience with St. Cobain, to find out where else this is in the state. So I think looking at the numbers, I think New Hampshire, we've, we've tested over 15, over 15,000 uh, individual wells, uh, some of them public, some of them private wells, uh, which to be blunt is I think more than the rest of the country combined. Wow. So we, we've really leaned ahead to find out where, the, where this problem is so we can address it. And now we're testing because we're looking for what exactly? Obviously we hear about these, these different acronyms, PFAS, PFOAs, um, you know, the, the other shorthand is forever chemicals, but, but what exactly are they and why are we so concerned about them? Sure. So the PFAS generically is, is a term for a family of almost 4,000 4, different compounds. Uh, they've been used in manufacturing for decades now. So really, if, if you think of anything that repels water, uh, you know, your, maybe your clothes or that type of thing, or raincoat, uh, or repels grease, like maybe your pizza box or something like that, over the years, that has had PFAS as, as one of the uh, uh, constituents of PFAS likely likely in it. What we found with the March of Time and science is that that has health impacts to, to folks. So with that information, New Hampshire, uh, going back a few years now, has set drinking water standards for PFAS, mm -hmm. which we feel are protective. Uh, that's only for four of the 4,000, if you will. So there's, there's this this frustration I'm sure with the public of our, what about all these other ones and there's, there's just not enough data quite yet right. to get there. So the ones we were, we had the information for, we went ahead and moved uh, for standards. EPA is, is looking at doing the same thing right now. Yeah, I know I've seen a little bit uh, about more funding coming from the federal government inside the uh, bipartisan infrastructure law. Uh, there's two billion in it to address contaminants like PFAS and drinking water. Is New Hampshire getting some of that and, and what are we doing with it? Uh, absolutely, so we have uh, a lot of pots of money, thankfully. This, this, this state government, uh, the legislature going back, I forget my time frames here, at least three years now, uh, set up a, a lot of the bond for up to $50 million uh, for loans for PFAS. And then they've augmented that with another 25 million for grants and loans. Uh, we have a uh, substantial amount of money from the infrastructure bill yeah. uh, that you're referring to for, it's called emerging contaminants, so it's not necessarily, uh, has to be applied to PFAS, but PFAS certainly qualifies. So, so we're looking very actively at using those funds. Uh, the good news is with the infrastructure bill, with uh, the legislatures in New Hampshire and the governor seeing this as an issue, we, we've, uh, it's 
I put it this way, I've been in state service for 26 years now. Usually we have a problem with no funds. Uh, the good news is we, are, we have some funding available. The bad news is the amount of money this is going to take to, to, to fix outstrips the amount of money still available. Because it's just going to be such a, a large scope once we finally see the true extent of it, I assume. Correct. Uh, for folks at home, you know, especially if they have private wells, is this something they should be testing for at this point? Or is that is that a data point that doesn't necessarily help yet? No, it absolutely does help. So, so in, in fact, in some cases, if we have areas that we're concerned about, mm -hmm. we'll actually do the testing for you. Okay. Uh, not every not every place, but certainly if, if you are concerned about your, your water, absolutely have it tested. Uh, we have uh, a, a, a rebate program in the state. So if, if your well water has been contaminated, uh, we will provide, provide you for a, a rebate of up to $5,000 to get a point of entry system, it's called, or home treatment available. You'll get $5,000 towards that, or because we prefer you, that you actually connect to a, a water system, uh, you can get up to $10,000 rebate to have that happen. So, so that's another good reason to have your water tested so you can make, a, make yourself, make those uh, resources available to you. And how do folks find out if they're living in one of these areas of concern? Uh, well, we we send out uh, notices. So if we, we test in, if you're within a certain radius and we, we see that's an issue, we'll actually uh, try to notify you directly. Okay. Uh, but again, I don't wait for us. If yeah. you have a concern, go ahead and test. Uh, you know, we may be able to reimburse you for the test, but we'll definitely be able to, again, get you a, a rebate. That, that program is ongoing, and we're committed to doing that. All right, Commissioner, I know you've descri described this as the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, with all this. We really appreciate being here and discussing the next steps. Thank you. Well, thank you very much.